This is part five of my video debunking a video from a comedian claiming he defeated every argument against gun control. His video had 23 points, so here's my response to his last three points, 21 through 23. And if you haven't already, make sure you go and watch parts one through four. But before I start, I want you to make sure you have all of your notifications turned on by hitting the bell symbol and click the all button so you can always be notified when I release a new video. 21. An armed society is a polite society. America has more than twice as many guns per capita as the next country, so you'd expect us to be polite as fuck. I've traveled a lot, and you know what I've never heard Americans described as? Polite. Meanwhile, look at Japan. We have more than 400 times their guns per capita, and they are pretty polite. So why the dichotomy? Someone being armed doesn't make the person they're talking to polite. It makes them scared. More importantly, people use this phrase to say that if everyone had a gun, then no one would get out of line. But that's not actually what this quote means. The quote comes from science fiction writer Robert Heinlein's book, Beyond the Horizon, in a passage about how guns are a great tool to kill people weaker than you. This is actually a quote about just how bad things can get when everyone is armed. I never really took this quote literally. I always felt it was a euphemistic way of saying criminals are less inclined to try people when they know most of the people are armed. This is evidenced by the fact that what criminals fear most are armed citizens. According to research completed by the U.S. Department of Justice, private gun ownership influences the behavior of criminals. In the study, over 1,800 imprisoned felons across the country were surveyed on their opinions of firearms. Here's what they learned. One third of criminals questioned had encountered an armed victim. The study found 34% of felons had been scared off, shot at, wounded, or even captured by a gun-owning victim. 56 of those interviewed agreed that criminals intentionally avoid armed victims. If criminals know the individual has a weapon, they choose to target another victim. Owning a gun isn't about fear. It's about mutual respect of capability. The irony is criminals love gun control. Criminals don't want their victims carrying guns because then they'd have to respect what those people are capable of if they tried to harm them. And for all of the BS about Americans not being polite, it's not exactly stopping people from trying to come to America in droves. But here's what's so ironic. Damn near everyone in Texas has a gun. Want to take a guess which state ranked fourth for being the friendliest state in the country? I think you already know the answer, but I'll go ahead and I'll say it for you. Texas. Hell, of the top 10 friendliest states in the U.S., most of them are also gun-friendly states. Just saying. Number 22. The best thing to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. In 2011, Representative Gabby Giffords was shot in Tucson, Arizona. When the shooter stopped to reload, bystanders pounced on the guy and subdued him. Just then, someone else who had heard the gunfire came charging out of a Walgreens and almost shot one of the bystanders. Because sometimes people who mean well can be idiots. More importantly, the statistics do not bear out this argument at all. Justifiable homicides exist, like self-defense. In 2018, for each one of those, there were 34 other gun homicides and 82 gun suicides. In fact, someone is statistically twice as likely to use a gun to accidentally kill themselves than to save a life. And victims who were in possession of a gun during a crime were shot at four times the rate as people who were unarmed. It seems as though the main thing that can help a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. If a good guy with a gun wasn't the best way to stop a bad guy with a gun, we wouldn't have armed police. Our president wouldn't have armed secret service. And banks wouldn't have armed security guards. Everything we value in this country, we protect with guns. But somehow when it comes to protecting our lives from bad men with guns, all of a sudden good guy stopping a bad guy with a gun doesn't work. How convenient. And don't think I missed that slick shit you tried to pull. The reason he's using justifiable homicides is because it's specific to someone dying, thus will result in a lower number. He's trying to avoid the stat that I called out in the last video where the largest most comprehensive survey of American gun owners ever conducted suggests that they use firearms in self-defense about 1.7 million times a year. Just because the good guy with the gun didn't shoot his gun or kill the bad guy to stop the bad guy doesn't mean he wasn't a good guy with a gun stopping a bad guy with a gun. Most of the time, simply presenting the gun stops the attack from happening. Nice try, Steve, but I've been doing this for a long time. As for the Gabby Gifford shooting, he didn't even point his gun at the person. He was about to and then realized he wasn't the actual shooter, just someone who took the gun from the shooter, which if the real shooter had had another gun, that good guy with the gun would have had to use that gun to stop the real shooter, who was the bad guy. Number 23. And my favorite, if you're not gonna interpret the Second Amendment as absolute, 
What about the first? Well, my internet constitutional scholars, the First Amendment isn't even close to absolute, nor should it be. Time and time again, courts have correctly ruled that there are exceptions to the First Amendment. In fact, there are nine categories of speech that are not protected by the First Amendment. Incitement, fraud, obscenity, child pornography, provoking a fight, threatening the life of the president, violations of intellectual property law, false advertising, and restricted speech based on your position of the government. Nine categories. Nine. So if you want us to apply the same standards to the First Amendment as we want you to apply to the Second Amendment, cool. We already did. I hate this dumb argument. Those nine categories, but for one, which doesn't apply to anyone not in government, is a consequence of an action. If you say these things, you'll be punished. The same way you can't murder someone with a gun. You don't put a muzzle on people going into a movie theater to prevent them from yelling fire, but you want to take certain guns away to prevent a possible murder. There are nearly 300 federal gun laws on the books and close to 20,000 gun laws on the state and local level. The Second Amendment is so far from being absolute at this point, we might as well call it the One Third Amendment. One of the prevailing themes of this guy's arguments and most anti-gunners arguments is that the idea that regular people can defend themselves with a gun is a joke and that instead we should depend on the government to keep us safe and give up our guns. Some say it explicitly and some, like this comedian, says it implicitly. But if your life is ever on the line, this comedian isn't going to be there to save you. You'll have to rely on yourself because you're the only one responsible for your safety. That's the meaning behind the phrase, I am the militia. You can't hold the government accountable for not protecting you, so you have to do it yourself. And the best and most effective way to do that is exercising your two-way rights. Now, if you're wondering where to get this beautiful, awesome I Am The Militia shirt, it'll be available on the shop.mrcoleonthewar.com site, and I'll put a link in the description section of this video. And also, don't forget to become a member of the channel. YouTube membership is another way for you to support the channel and what we do here for the Second Amendment. There are three distinct groups. There's the Pew Pew Life, the Militia, and the Amosexuals. Each of those groups have their own definitive and distinctive perks and benefits. However, however, I, on a personal level, non-officially, will be conducting giveaways for those members as well. I recently gave away $500 worth of Surefire Lights and we'll be doing that again here pretty soon. So. If you're looking to find out more information about how to become a YouTube member, I'm going to put a link in the description section as well. But if you'd like, there's also a join button that you can click. Just hit the join button and pull up all the information. You can look through it and figure out which one you are. The people you like, the militia, or dirty amosexual. And of course, like always, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share the video. Pass it on so that people can see the fallacies and a lot of these arguments. Because there are a lot of people out there who make these arguments or hear these arguments and think that they're true when they're not. So share this video so that we can continue to counter that information that's going out there. Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.